dear students in this module we will cover neo malthusianism specifically this model this module will help us in understanding about the following aspects the prelude to the neo malthusianism the classical school the neo classical school and finally the neo malthusianism as part of our efforts to understand about various population theories in this module we will try to get a comprehensive understanding about all these four aspects we will also try to get an understanding about the kind of initiatives as part of these four aspects that led to development of population theories before understanding the neo malthusianism or in other words the revised form of malthus theory we should try to understand how the population is being considered or what kind of considerations were there with regard to population we should try to understand this aspect as well let us now look at the history between the early years of the 19th century and towards the end of the first world war which happened to be the year of 1918 during that period the classical and neo classical schools of thought contributed in a big way towards the development of population theory we discussed about these aspects specifically the classical and neo classical schools of thought in other modules of this paper as well one can see that the basic difference between the classical and neo classical school of thought is in terms of the following aspects the classical school gave emphasis to production of goods and services as a focus of economic analysis that means the emphasis of the classical school was on production of goods and services with the focus being the economic analysis the classical school of economics considered the population as production of goods and services that means the population is was considered as a means to produce the goods and services that is why if you have more population there will be more production of goods and services that was the concept of the classical school of economics on the other hand the neo classical school of economics gave emphasis to the exchange of goods and services which was the focus of the economic analysis we can put it in other words as the neo classical school of economics considered the population as consumers of goods and services one can see the difference between the classical and neo classical school of thought the first one considered the population as producers of goods and services while the next one considered the population as consumers of the goods and services the neo malthusianism favored the use of contraceptives to reduce population growth and improve the standard of living let us understand the aspects involved in this opinion here we are talking about the use of contraceptives so as to reduce the population growth and improve in the standard of living the neo malthusianism was in favor of 
use of contraceptives aiming at reducing the population growth besides improving the standard of living. As we have seen in other modules, population growth can be reduced or population growth can be controlled by use of contraceptives. And we also have seen in other modules that reduction in population growth would lead to improved standard of living. Studies carried out in various parts of the world indicate the association between reduction of population growth and improvement of standard of living. Thus, in the course of development of demographic studies, population theories evolved over a period of time. Let us now look at the classical school of economics. We briefly discussed about it in some of the other modules of this paper, population theories as well. Let us look at the classical school of thought again. As we discussed earlier, the classical school of economics was founded by Adam Smith and other famous economists. If we look at the classical school of economics and their views on population, we can find that the classical school of economics firmly believed that economics functioned better under a free and private initiative and presence of vigorous competition rather than under government control. Here we have two scenarios. The scenario one allows free and private initiatives and also existence of vigorous competition. The scenario two was talking about firm government control. The classical school of economics believed that the scenario one functions better from the economic point of view. That means wherever you have free and private initiative with vigorous competition, the economy functions better compared to the situation where the government controls the economy. What is the basis of the classical theory? Let us look into this. The basis of the classical theory is that production, consumption and distribution of wealth are determined by economic laws. In any society, when we are talking about wealth, there are three vital components. One is the production of wealth, second is about consumption of wealth and the third aspect is distribution of wealth. According to the classical theory and the whole basis of the classical theory was under the assumption that production, consumption and distribution of wealth are determined by the economic laws. Now let us turn our attention to the Neo Classical School. The Neo Classical School of Thought was founded by William Jarons and others. The Neo Classical School of Thought placed greater emphasis on the mathematical economics and the mathematical analysis is based on consumer demands, decisions and actions. The population is considered as consumers of goods and services. 
in line with this assumption and in line with this kind of viewpoint that population is considered as consumers of goods and services. Growth in population increases the volume of population and thereby it also leads to increase in the number of producers and consumers. Let us look into this. Imagine in a society the population growth rate increases. As a result of increase in the population growth rate, the volume of population also increases. Then what happens? Then the number of producers would go up because more people are involved in production of wealth or more people are involved in production of goods and services. In addition to that, the same population would also be the consumers of the goods and services that are produced. So, there is increase in the population growth rate and consequential increase in the volume of population coupled with increase in the number of producers as well as number of consumers of various goods and services. Thus, it also leads to proportionate increase in production as well as consumption. Let us now look at some of the important points that have to be understood. One important and crucial point one has to understand at this point of time pertains to the influence of population size on the per capita production. Yes, with increase in the population growth rate, the volume of population increases and production and consumption also increase. Here we are talking about the influence of population size on the per capita production. The, uh, the production per se goes up, but is there an increase in the per capita production as well with the increase in the population size? That is a crucial point to be understood. However, this issue about the influence of population size on the per capita production was resolved when the principle of diminishing returns was formulated in the second decade of the 19th century. The law of diminishing returns, we discussed about it in some of the other modules, but let us spend some time to have a relook at the law of diminishing returns. The law of diminishing returns in the field of economics is defined as follows. When any one factor of production, say labor, is increased, the average production per labor will decrease under the assumption that other factors such as capital and land are held constant. That means, at a certain point, even if there is increase in the labor that is available, the average production per labor may decrease. This is the consideration of the law of diminishing returns. Several studies showed that the law of diminishing returns is felt more or observed more in the agriculture sector than in industrial sector. That means increase in the labor that is available leading to decrease in the average production per labor would be observed more often in the agriculture sector 
compared to the industrial sector. Let us understand other dimensions of this. Let us assume that there is presence of division of labor and advancement in the technology, particularly in the manufacturing sector. Then is the law of diminishing returns applicable there? The theory says that in such kind of a situation where division of labor is there and technological advancement is there in the manufacturing sector, then perhaps the law of diminishing returns is not applicable. And the law of diminishing returns was also supported by the Malthusian doctrine. This is an important aspect that has to be understood. If in the manufacturing sector, imagine we are talking about an industry or a factory. If there is division of labor, which is clearly spelt out and followed and the industry also has the benefit of advanced technology that is applied for production. In such kind of a scenario, increase in the population growth rate or increase in the labor that is available may not lead to decrease in the average production. It also stated that the population growth trend tends to be press per capita production and increase the demand. So, this is another important aspect of this theory. The increase in the population growth would depress the per capita production and it increases the demand. As the 19th century advanced, there was enough empirical evidence to prove that the population growth and the general well-being of the people went hand in hand. Of course, this observation was used to discredit both the Malthusian theory and the principle of diminishing returns. Subsequently, it was also realized that the economic analysis which indicates that the total production as well as per capita production depend not only on population factors but also on several other factors and these factors include the resources, the labor available, capital as well as the technology. That means the total production or the per capita production depend on several factors. Population happens to be one of the factors and other factors particularly the labor related factors or capital or the technological advancement. These factors would also influence the production whether it is total production or per capita production. In view of this, the role of population as one of the factors of production in the overall economic system got diminished and population became one of the many factors within the framework of the total economic system. So, population was not the only factor that would determine the total production or per capita production. Rather, it happens to be one of the several factors that would determine the total as well as per capita production. As the 19th century advanced further, the production theory itself underwent several changes. Now, let us understand the Neo-Malthusianism. The term Neo-Malthusianism was first used in 1877 by Dr. Samuel Van Houten. Dr. Samuel was one of the vice presidents of the Malthusian League that was established. The Neo-Malthusianism 
is not just an advocacy favoring birth control. In fact, the neo Malthusianism was interested in understanding the consequences of rapid population growth on human conduct and human behavior. So, the idea was to understand the implications of rapid population growth on human behavior as well as human conduct. The neo Malthusian thinking just like the Malthusian theory also believed that the world's resources will not be able to support the population after a certain point. As we have seen in other modules, Malthusian theory felt that the world resources would not be able to support the population after a certain point. The Neo-Malthusian thinking also felt that the world resources would not be able to support the population after a certain point. There is also a belief that food and population growth are correlated. That means there is correlation between food and the population growth. The production in food, rate of growth in food production and the rate of growth in population are correlated. This was another belief of the Neo-Malthusian thinkers. The Neo-Malthusian thinkers also believed that population growth is correlated with not just food but also with other aspects like oil, minerals, land and water. So, they went beyond the earlier theories and propagated that there is correlation between population growth and food, oil, minerals, land and water. Thus, the Neo-Malthusians believed in abortion and birth control as a way to slow down the rapid population growth in view of the relationship between population growth and other resources including food. Paul Ehrlich was very vocal and he was a prominent Neo-Malthusian. He came out with a book, Population Bomb. Through this book, he warned of possible mass starvation because of our population and he also advocated abortion and birth control methods to reduce the population growth. He encouraged the government intervention into the population issue. According to the Neo-Malthusians, population problem in underdeveloped countries was an inevitable result of the reproductive behavior of man. The theory of demographic transition, however, rejects the view that high population growth is a long-term phenomenon. High population growth is transitory phenomenon. And it occurs in the second stage of the demographic transition because of rapid decline in mortality rate without corresponding decline in the birth rate. We also know that every country passes through the various stages of demographic transition. In the first stage, both birth rate and death rate are high, resulting in more or less a stable population. Even if there is some increase in the population, because of somewhat higher birth rates than death rate in a particular state, it does not pose any serious problem. Generally, in developing economies where agriculture is the main occupation of the people, per capita income will be low. And this results in low levels of standard of living, deprivation of basic necessities of life, like inadequate and unbalanced diet, poor housing conditions, inadequate opportunities for education and health, high death rate and high birth rate. In an agrarian economy, certain economic factors also induce people to have more children and the burden of child care rests on the woman. In these economies, the children also start working at an early age and augment the household income 
children contribute to the income of the household by start working at an early age. And children are also considered as the traditional source of security for the parents in their old days. And people are generally indifferent to family planning because of these reasons. The second stage of demographic transition which is characterized by high birth rate and low death rate and it results in rapid population growth. With the onset of socio-economic development, living standards improve and increase number of children who attend school, medical and health facilities would increase and the governments treat the spread of communicable diseases. All these developments together would lead to reduction in the death rates. But the fertility attitude would not change and hence the fertility remained high and as a result the population growth rates would accelerate. When a country is experiencing both second stage of demographic transition and stagnant economic growth, large section of the population remained below the poverty line and economists call this as population explosion. So, dear students, in this module, we looked into the Neo-Malthusian theory, we looked into the relationship between population, growth, production and consumption. We also looked into the relations or associations or correlations between population, food, population and other resources such as water, land, oil, etc. So, in a nutshell, this module provided as an opportunity to understand the thinking of the Neo-Malthusians with regard to the population growth and its association with other factors such as food and other resources. We also looked into the three stages of demographic transition wherein the role of population growth and its association with development was clearly highlighted by the demographers and thinkers who studied the population growth structure and its impact on the development of the society. We also looked into the Malthusian theory and we also tried to understand the difference between the neo-classical school of economics and the classical school of economics. In a nutshell, this module helped us to get a better understanding about the population theory that was brought out by the Neo-Malthusian group of thinkers. So, thank you so much.